These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. Right. Straight up hill, Shane. Okay. What would it be like to cross-country ski if you had limited vision or if you couldn't see at all? Would you do it? Turning right now. Skiers from around the world of all ages and abilities have converged on the snow-covered mountains and pine forests of Kananaskis, Alberta for Ski for Light Canada. Ski all day and all night. This annual six-day event allows those with visual impairments the chance to experience freedom, independence, friendship, and the great Canadian winter through cross-country skiing. Ski for Light Canada is one of many groups of Ski for Light. There's actually one even in Japan. I just started cross-country skiing this week, so, so far it has been three days. The youngest I skied with was eight, and the oldest, he's here today, and he's 97. In the late 20s, I started uh, downhill skiing. And our youngest skier comes from Norway. I think he's 20. No, well, he's just playing well, fast. Ski for Light Canada has been around since 1978, but its origins are well before that. Janet Fletcher, guide and registrar with Ski for Light Canada, explains. Started with a blind fellow in Norway in the 50s, I believe, and he I had been a cross-country skier when he lost his sight, he was no longer able to do so. And apparently an um, army truck went through his town and he had his skis on and he found he could ski in the tracks. And I believe he said something like, um, if I can do this, I can do anything. I can hardly wait to tell my friends I found freedom again. And that was what really impacted me when I joined up with Ski for Light. The location rotates between British Columbia, Saskatchewan and Alberta. We're at William Watson Lodge, that's in Kananaskis, Alberta, and I love the cabins because they're very homey, little fireplaces, and everything here is accessible. Participants use the main building of the lodge as the hub for most of the group's activities, including meals, special events, or just hanging out. But the real fun is outside, on the skis. Yeah, out in the woods, and I can just really enjoy it. Anthony Nelson has come to the frozen north from the deep south. Originally Georgetown, South Carolina, and I'm a transplant into Columbia, South Carolina, where I currently reside. Being a track and field person from youth, I grew up with some other buddies, and I, one day one of my buddies who did my track and field stuff told me, said, hey, Anthony, there's this ski for light thing going on. You ought to go try that. You'd love it. I promised I will, would, and 10 years later, my life allowed me to go to a Ski for Light event in Bend, Oregon, and I've been coming to most of the events since then. And this is my first one here in Canada. It feels real good, like I know it should. Yeah! My family, there are 10 living children, and seven of us have uh, different degrees of visual impediment. So we are all, basically all of those are congenital cataract from birth. I can see the track pretty well. Um, that doesn't mean I don't go off and lose my balance or anything, but the guide Great. there as an audio cue to help me, particularly through shaded and lighted, mo turn. moving from a shade to light or moving from a light to shade, that helps tremendously. Great. And if I'm out there daydreaming and they tell me the, the curve, you know, that keeps me a little bit alert. Anthony, huh? can we ski again? Yeah. yeah. Ski all day and all night. Okay, let's go. Veteran Vancouver skier Brian Boswell is Anthony's guide and singing partner. Okay, let's go straight. He'll see something and uh, it'll remind him of something and he'll, he'll sing a line or two. And I may or may not join in depending on how I feel, <laughs> if I know the words. Rock and roll all night, party every day. Anthony is great. I love being Anthony's guide. He's full of enthusiasm. He's got a great sense of humor. He's fit. He loves to ski. Got some good glad on these today. How are your ski gliding? The most important thing is listening to your skier and communicating with your skier. Every skier is different. There is a manual where they have some prescribed 
um, terms to use and commands and directions, but a lot of times um, they it's it's more what your skier wants. Right turn, keeping them safe. You are their eyes out there, and you don't want them getting hurt. Straight. Anthony and Brian are just two of the over 80 skiers and guides braving southern Alberta's freezing temperatures. You can't dress for it. You just have to suffer the cold and get used to it. Canadian winter is so long. You gotta find a way to enjoy this weather. <laughs> Vivian Chong has come to Kananaskis country from the relatively balmy climbs of Toronto. I really happened to pick the coldest week to come here. It's minus 37 the first day I arrived. I just started cross-country skiing this week, so, so far it has been three days. I'm a yoga teacher, so one of my students told me he just signed up for Ski for Light, and he's the second last person to sign up. So I thought, whoa, I can be the very last person. So then I did. I'm the very last person to sign up for the program this year. According to the race category, I'm B3, so very, very blind. So nothing I could see at all, just all gray. My eye condition is called toxic epidermal necrolysis syndrome. And so far I haven't come across another person with the same syndrome, it's really rare. And I'd like you to pull down here. Yep, double pull, perfect, great. Heather Zand, president of Ski for Light Canada, is an experienced Calgary skier, as well as Vivian's instructor and guide. Vivian is my skier. I met her the first day and she is being a brand new skier. I had to start from scratch with her and she is absolutely amazing. She is very athletic so she was able to immediately start moving on the skis. She just moved so bravely and, oh and then she could pick up everything that I would say to her about gliding. We had to learn how to find the tracks, even to put on the skis. And she has progressed daily. Um, we go on easy trails, um, but we also have moved into some up and down trails that are more intermediate, and she's handling them really well. She is so enthusiastic that it's an absolute joy to work with her. I like the moving and the motion, so you kind of like have your arm and feet moving at the same time, it's very vigorous and it feels like dancing to me. Dancing outdoor in the snow and it's like a little choo-choo train. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Double fold, gradual right. Shaida and Shabu gradual Hussein right. came from Tanzania, Africa, a place not exactly known for cross-country skiing. Double fold. It was really tough uh, to ski because we come from a tropical area, right? Tanzania, which is really warm, no snow. Only if you go up Kilimanjaro, this where you see the snow. Otherwise, there's no snow. So tropical, one season, all year round. Uphill, uphill. I met Shabu uh, at the University of Calgary. I was doing some evening classes and he was a full-time student. I was with a friend and he was with a friend and uh, we, they, we got introduced. And I went away abroad to teach. Uh, I'm a nurse by profession. I went to teach, came back. And when I came back, Shabu was a big star because he was the first totally blind Canadian to have qualified at the University of Calgary. And he was in the news, in newspaper, TV, radio, everything. And I thought, oh wow, it's nice to have a guy, to know a guy who is so popular. Gradual left. And it's like uphill. So I'm total, can't see anything. I was just uh, 17 years old when I lost my eyesight through retinal detachments in both eyes. You go in front of me. Be careful, uh, be careful, keep your pole to the, uh, on your right. Shabu found out about the Ski for Light from his friend who kept on saying, you should really come to the Ski for Light, you should. Eventually we plucked up our courage and said, let's give it a try and we came and we loved it. And since then we have not missed a single Ski for Light. We love it. 
sharp right coming up. Slow down, slow down. Slow when down. we were being taught how to ski, cross country skiing, uh, the disabled skier guide, she also taught me how to guide Shabu. So I was doing two things at the same time. I was learning to ski and also to guide him. This is called Simul Talk. So you have a two-way radio, so you can uh, talk to each other at the same time. Shabu, mm -hmm. let's check your radio. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you very clearly. Can you hear me? No, I can't hear you. Yeah, I think my pin has come off. Oh. So this pin has to be in that, yeah, in the mic. Okay. Oh, it's uh, It came off. The, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I'll press the talk button. Yeah. Can you, can hear, you hear me? me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Very well. And is it loud enough? Yes, it's loud enough. Okay. I'm just going to turn the volume up a little bit because I can't hear you much. If the skis are making too much noise, I can't hear her if it's, she's not uh, with this radio. But once she, she's with the radio, I can hear her because right is right on my ear, then her instructions are loud and clear. He's at an advantage that he knows where he is, even though I'm not right beside him, as long as I can see him. So I can guide him even from a little distance. Cross-country skiing, if you have uh, the right help and guide, it's not difficult. You can do it. If you can walk, you can cross-country ski. Even if you're 97, like New Jersey resident and longtime skier Charlie Worth. You can move very slowly if you want. A lot of the areas where you would ski are pretty level. You could stick to those. In the late 20s, I started uh, downhill skiing. You know, I managed to see well enough to keep pretty much out of trouble. Actually, I was born with very bad eyesight. My mother had uh, measles while she was carrying me, and apparently that was a problem. It uh, remained pretty much the same for many years until the 1960s, and then everything started to go wrong, you know, uh, cataracts, glaucoma, and finally retinal detachment. One of the women and the American Ski for Light told me about the Canadian version that she enjoyed, and I came up and tried that, uh, guided by this lovely uh, woman, uh, Cassandra, from near the Red Deer area, and uh, we've been uh, together, you know, skiing together for about 10 years. And in that time, Charlie's guide, Cassandra Rafa, has developed a close relationship with her very independent friend. Charlie, remember when you first started coming here? Yeah. And I always wanted to carry your skis to the ski line. And you always wanted to carry them. And then I said to you, okay, you're right, Charlie, because you're so independent, right? And I said, okay, you're right, Charlie, I don't want you to depend on me or I'll have to marry you. And do you remember what you said? You said, I can think of worse things. Well, that's very true. <laughs> it's these special relationships and the joy of skiing that bonds this group together. Breathe the fresh air and listen to the birds, if any, or if you have some sight, you know, you can enjoy the, the mountains and the, the foliage and the trees around you. I think it's uh, just a nice way to, to spend a day outdoors. But I mean, you can just be out there in the nice weather, not uh, 29 below. To escape the evening's frigid temperatures, people have gathered in the lodge for Roger's Quiz Night. Welcome. This is the 18th quiz night we've ever had. Will you please gather into your teams at a table? Roger Woodgate is an avid skier, longtime participant of Ski for Light and Quizmaster. The first round is on dogs, and, and just to give you an example, um, if I said clergyman's identifying garment, what would that be? Shout it out, it's not part of the quiz. Dog collar, right, okay, so you know what we're at here. We formed a committee of the skiers looking for something to do on the Wednesday night and I suggested, well, why don't we have a quiz night? And they said, well, what does that involve? And I said, well, somebody has to have questions and uh, answers and they said, well, who's going to do that? I said, well, I can do it. Next round is orange. 
This is an example, American Sporting Trophy. Orange Bowl, okay, yeah, now, so you've got the picture. They've all got orange in them. As a physiotherapist, I had my own clinic in Calgary. I retired in uh, 1991 and uh, thought, well, uh, Ski for Light is coming up and it's right here at William Watson Lodge in my local area, so I'll um, sign up for it. So I did and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And so I've been coming ever since. Home of Disneyland. Orange County. Orange County is correct. I was born with a congenital glaucoma. I had about 5% vision as a child. And then about 1994, it uh, went down to zero. So I've been totally blind since then. Johnny Cash song. Orange Blossom Special. Orange Blossom Special is correct. I have a, a device called a Braille Light. It's not a computer, but it's a, a note taker um, and a word processor, and it has refreshable Braille. And so I have all of my stuff entered in there. And so when I get to the uh, next question, I just press a key and the next question pops up and I can read it. But it's very old technology. It's 1990s technology. So people say, you still use your Braille light machine? I say, yes, and it's very, very useful. I've always been a bit of a rebel <clears throat> and I've always liked to be a bit different. I've never been a conformist. And um, so about, oh, when I was about 45, I got my first kilt. And because I said, well, it's jolly comfortable wearing a kilt. And since uh, I turned 50, I decided that was a, a, a landmark in my life. I said, from now on, I'm going to wear kilts for most of the time. So now the only time I wear trousers is when I'm skiing. Um, and even then, if the weather is not too cold, I'll wear a kilt for the race, but I don't think I'm going to tomorrow. It's gonna to be too darn cold. But the rest of the time, I wear kilts just because I enjoy it. So please pass your answer sheet to the table next to you. The next table will mark it for you. Number seven, Irish Meeting House. Orange Lodge is the correct answer. Hand the paper back to the team it belongs to, and then we'll, we'll see if we can find out who the winner is. I never do find out. <laughs> oh, Darlene will give him the prize, and that's the main. Oh, to the victor go the spoils <laughs> of wine and chocolate. I hereupon declare that the quiz over. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Turning right now. We have two sets of tracks that run parallel to each other. And uh, they're all one-way tracks so that we don't have anybody coming at you at any point. And we ski four loops, which uh, equal five kilometers of track. Participants are divided into categories depending on their vision and skill level as a skier. In the um, sighted community, especially for the professionals that race, they measure people's vision impairments by um, a B1, a B2, and a B3. And a B1 is somebody who sees nothing at all. A B2, they have 5% vision, and a B3 has 10% vision. With temperatures hovering around minus 20, everyone waiting at the start line is anxiously waxing skis, stretching and moving, just to stay warm. The crunch of snow under skis and poles fill the air as the first pair of skiers get underway. Three, two, one, curving right. We're going to transition into a left here, slightly downhill. Side step, just to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, ah. to the right. You're almost there. Get to the left, Al. Okay, that's your track. Perfect. Nice. Way to go. Three, two, one. Whoa, no. Finish line. That's it. As each skier crosses the finish line, volunteer race officials record the times. 
all the skiers will have to wait until the medal ceremonies on Saturday night to find out where they placed in their official time. The following day is a free day with time to relax before the two and a half and 5K races on Saturday. Later in the evening, Monique Van Bergen, Ski for Light Canada secretary, had a surprise announcement. Can I have your attention, please? Uh, I have the unfortunate news to announce that the weather is not cooperating for tomorrow. The minus 27 in the morning with a wind chill of minus 41. So we have made the executive decision that there will be no racing tomorrow. For only the second time in the event's 41 year history has any race been canceled. Uh, but most don't seem to mind. Guide Joan Selby. We were actually relieved because it's more fun just to go out skiing on our own than have that competition and that stress. Veteran skier Harmon Van Bergen. The race was canceled today and it was a good idea because I've been in races where they did go and it is very cold. Um, Longtime skier Arlene Stapleton. I, you know, I would have gone in the race uh, uh, even if it had been cold, but um, I was quite relieved that I didn't have to. If they had no races, I'd be still be as interested in coming because I get, you know, the enjoyment out of it. With two of the three races canceled, the medal ceremony was a little shorter than usual. In category B3, Chris White, along with his guide and brother Jeff, took gold, finishing in the blistering time of 33 minutes, 51 seconds. Anthony and Brian took bronze with a time of 58 minutes, 52 seconds. In category B2, Norwegians Newt and Ola Sorskar are awarded gold with an impressive time of 34 minutes, 15 seconds. Nice to be able to get out in the fresh air and enjoy the quiet of skiing. It encouraged me to believe that uh, I'm doing something which many uh, sighted people can't or won't do. If I can do that, then I, I suppose I can attempt other things and uh, may well succeed. And if I don't, well, at least I've tried. It's a good sport for blind people and I found it very enjoyable and jolly good exercise. Our event is not only about skiing, it's about being part of a group that do things together. And the skiing part of it is something that we all have in common. I've made lifetime friends that I would never expected to have from all over the world. We keep in touch. I can just relax in the process of learning with my ski guy and not worry about where I am at any given time and not worry about I'll be lost in the field knowing that I have a trustworthy person be with me. If there's anything that you know that someone wants to do in life, it doesn't matter what it is. Go on out there and give it a shot. Find a way to get involved. By Sunday, it was time to load the bus and say goodbye to Kananaskis Valley and ski for Light Canada for another year. If you're hesitant about trying something, just go for it. Producers Tim Tester, Linda Blackwell. Videographer Tim Tester. Editor Tim Tester. Narration Jim Van Horn. Production assistant Chris Shaw. Pacific Regional Content Specialist Sylvie Fiquette. Integrated Describe Video Specialist Simone Cupid. Graphics Andrew Antonello. Coordinating producer Jennifer Johnson. Director Production Kara Nye. Director Programming Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2019 Accessible Media Inc.